The Battle of Jiangling was fought by the Allied forces of Sun Quan and Liu Bei against Cao Cao during the late Eastern Han Dynasty of China. The battle was an integral part of the Red Cliffs campaign, and was fought immediately after the Battle of Yiling in 208, and the preceding engagement at Wulin on land and the Marine Battle of Red Cliffs where Cao Cao's navy was destroyed. Note that the Battle at Wulin was a byproduct of the Battle of Red Cliffs, and they were not the same battle. While the fighting around Jiangling County was vigorous, there were less fierce battles taking place in southern Jing province. Unable to isolate Jiangling from its supporting cities for details, the campaign became a war of attrition, which resulted in enormous casualties for Cao Cao's side. After a year or so, Cao Cao could no longer afford the continuous losses in personnel and materiel, so he ordered Cao Ren to withdraw from Jiangling. Chapter 1 Background After the great victory in the Battle of Red Cliffs, the Allies immediately carried out their next step of their strategy by attempting to take control of Nan Commandery from Cao Cao by driving the retreating enemy toward Jiangling County. Chapter 2 The Battles Chapter 2 Section 1, Liu Bei Fronts Zhou Yu was worried about Cao Cao's unscathed units totaling over 100,000 strong, which were scattered around strategic locations, so he urged Liu Bei to send Guan Yu to block Cao Ren's supply lines via infiltration. Zhou Yu wanted to have Guan Yu attack the enemy rear while bypassing the strong point of Jiangling, in order to isolate Jiangling for a coordinated attack. Chapter 2 Section 1 Subsection 2 Guan Yu's Infiltration Guan Yu, along with Su Fei, led a special force composed of navy and elite infantry, sailed up the Han River, and attacked the city of Xiangyong, which was guarded by Yue Jin. However, Guan Yu was soundly defeated by Yue Jin outside the city. At Xiaoku, Guan Yu's fleet met Yue Jin and Wen Ping, and Guan Yu was held off by his rivals. When Ping trailed Guan Yu to Han Ford, in which he had Guan Yu's food storage burnt to the ground. As a result, Guan Yu attempted to recuperate at Jincheng however, his pursuers would not allow him to rest, and Guan Yu was forced to fight a naval battle with Wen Ping, which resulted in a total disaster. Chapter 2 Section 1 Subsection 3 Northern Blockade Liu Bei authorized Zhang Fei and Guan Yu to command his troops. He suggested to Zhou Yu to block Jiangling from receiving new supplies as a means of driving Cao Ren out. Thus, Guan Yu was sent north to intercept enemy reinforcements, and blockades were set along the main passages. However, Cao Cao's general Li Tong fought valiantly, he dismounted and removed the blockades one by one, and advanced forward. Unable to suppress his enemy, Guan Yu ordered a retreat and Li Tong managed to enter Jiangling. Chapter 2 Section 2, Zhou Yu Fronts The Allies appeared to be suffering losses but their failures were considered minor as compared to that of Cao Cao's side. A few months earlier, Cao Ren's elite cavalry suffered over 3,000 casualties in a single day in an attempt to retake Yiling, besides, Cao Ren and his aide, Chu Huang, were unable to suppress Ling Tong, who were defending Zhou Yu's main camp on his own. Chapter 2 Section 2 Subsection 2 Nui Jin's Assault Hence, the soldiers inside Jiangling had low morale, and Cao Ren knew he needed to do something to change the tide of war. To prevent morale from dropping further, Cao Ren recruited 300 volunteers to form an assault force led by General Nui Jin, in the hope that they could score a minor victory or demonstrate bravery on the field to boost morale. When the enemy vanguard reached the outskirts of the city, the small detachment was immediately besieged. Cao Ren ordered several tens of his best men to be ready for the rescue. His chief clerk Chen Zhao advised against it, arguing that the enemy's morale is too high, and losing several hundred men is not a big deal to us. Cao Ren ignored Chen Zhao's plea and went out, charging directly into the enemy. As Chen Zhao lost sight of Cao Ren, he was certain that Cao Ren was dead. However, to everyone's surprise, not only did Cao Ren rescue Nui Jin on the first attempt, 
he went back to save the remaining survivors. As Cao Ren and his troops returned to safety behind the city walls, the total fatalities of the combined forces of Cao Ren and Nui Jin were minimal. The surprised Chen Zhao could only mutter one sentence, General, you are truly a man from heaven. When Cao Cao learned of this soon after, he rewarded Cao Ren with the peerage of Marquis of Anping village for his bravery in this battle. Encouraged by this incident, Cao Ren set up camps outside the city walls. Zhou Yu personally led raids on Cao Ren's camps, and during one such raid, he was seriously wounded after he was hit by an arrow that broke one of his right ribs. Chapter 2 Section 2 Subsection 3 Withdrawal of Cao Ren In addition, the Allied force was unable to block the numerous reinforcements continually sent by Cao Cao, so the siege turned out to be a prolonged one. As Zhou Yu could hardly command the troops, the battles were left to Ling Tong, Lu Meng and others, who were forced to expediently alter their temporary objective into inflicting damage to the enemy units. After a year of intense fighting, Zhou Yu recovered and insisted on personally leading the army, he purposefully flaunted before Cao Ren and rallied his army to illustrate his determination to keep on the offensive. Being deceived by Zhou Yu, who was actually still in critical condition, Cao Cao unwillingly ordered Cao Ren to retreat under the rationale that his forces could no longer afford continuous loss of materiel and labor. Therefore, Sun Quan's forces finally succeeded in their objective of capturing Nan Commandery, which holds the upper stream of the Yangtze River, a strategic stronghold that would never be reclaimed by the state of Cao Wei. Chapter 3 Aftermath Liu Bei asked for and obtained Zhou Yu's permission to cover the rear and the flank of Zhou Yu's navy by taking the remaining four commanderies to the south of the Yangtze River from Cao Cao. All of the administrators of Cao Cao's four commanderies, including Jin Sun at Wuling Commandery, Han Sun at Changsha Commandery, Zhao Fan at Guiyang Commandery, and Lu Du at Lingling Commandery surrendered. More importantly, Liu Bei's conquest of these commanderies was an integral portion of the Red Cliffs campaign as part of the goal of the Allies. Liu Bei finally had a base of his own and he named Zhuge Liang as military advisor general of the household to oversee the administrative affairs of Changsha, Guiyang, and Lingling. Liu Bei was joined by Lei Xu and his troops, which added to the Liu Bei's force substantially. As soon as the news of Cao Cao's defeat at Wu Lin was heard, Lei Xu at Lu Jiang rebelled. Cao Cao's earlier strategy of keeping his veteran force in a separate force in the north to prepare for possible rebellions had paid off as he was able to summon the force to suppress the rebellion quickly by putting Xia Ho Yuan in charge, but the victory was not complete, though defeated and lost his turf, Lei Xu's force was largely unscathed, he led them to Lu Bei, strengthening the latter dot after Lu Bei became a powerful warlord of southern Jing province. Sun Quan was a bit apprehensive of him. So he arranged a marriage for Lu Bei and his sister. With the help of Sun Quan's strategist, Lu Su, Lu Bei also successfully borrowed Nan Commandery from Sun. Meantime, Lu Bei placed Si Eng Lang in charge of Zigi, Yidao, Wushan, and Yiling counties, all of them vital to invade Yi province. Thus, Lu Bei had secured everything he needed for the invasion of Yi province, and he would mobilize his troops towards Yi province in 211. Traditionally, the Battle of Jiangling is regarded as the end of the Red Cliffs campaign because as the confrontations ended and the battle turned into a siege, Cao Cao returned to his forward base in Chao County in the north in March, 209, and Sun Quan also gave up his attack on Hefei in the east, and the remainder of the siege of Jiangling was no longer considered as part of the campaign by most historians. The fall of Jiangling to Sun Quan is generally regarded as the aftermath of the campaign. Chapter 4, In Romance of the Three Kingdoms and Popular Culture For dramatic effect in many literary works, Liu Bei's conquest of the four commanderies south of the Yangtze River includes a match between Guan Yu and Huang Zhong which became the source of other cultural works, such as Beijing Opera. In reality, however, none of these were true. Contrary to what was depicted in the 14th century historical novel Romance of the Three Kingdoms, and Sun was not killed by Wei Yen, 
while there was no record when Wei Yen became a subject of Liu Bei or whether Wei Yen took part in this battle. In Dynasty Warriors 4, this battle is called Race for the Nan Territory. <laughs>